What is up, guys? My name is Logan Mayberry, and today we have a special guest. We have Christian Mayberry and his mom, Kim Mayberry, here to tell a wild testimony of what happened to Christian just a few years back. So, Christian, just start from the beginning. Tell right. us about like what all happened from the very beginning, everything that you remember. Yeah, all right. Well, so eight years ago, I was with some guys, you know, just I had some fun not doing anything wrong or stupid or anything, you know. Uh -huh. we, we went down to the, we, we live in Muldrow, Oklahoma. And we went down to the bottoms down by the river to go, you know, hang out. But we were on an ATV and his mom, she was driving and, you know, down by, by the river there's rocks, there's visualized rocks or trees, all kinds of things, you get really severely hurt as well. And sadly, I wasn't wearing a helmet. First mistake. I mean, I don't know if maybe I wouldn't have gotten hurt so severely, but I wasn't wearing one. And so I flew up, up and hit the ground so severely hard, my entire brain was injured. I had a TBI, traumatic brain injury. And it was very hard. I mean, I, I didn't walk or talk for, what, about six months or so? Over a year. Over wow. a year. It was so major and so surreal. Um, so my earthly body was still on earth, but my spirit went to heaven, and I met Jesus, wow. our Father, our Lord, our Savior, our Redeemer. And he put his arms out, and he and he gave me a hug, and he told me he loves me. And I met my little sister Vanessa, mom's daughter. Um, and you know, and mom she had a miscarriage, so I got to meet her in heaven, and I told mom that she looked just like her. And. Definitely as sweet as she is. I'm a mama's boy too, so I'm not ashamed to say that on national television. Wow. <laughs> so mom, what was that like when Christian mentioned that he had met the, your daughter? Uh, it just, you know, took me back. I had no idea. This was um, about a year after his accident. Mm -hmm. But you know, he, he didn't talk even a word for like six months and it took him a very long time to kind of come back yeah. to us and at that point he I mean he still wasn't walking or doing most things but he was mm -hmm. just laying in the uh, bed at the rehab one day and we were talking about actually someone else losing a child and um, when he heard that he just said oh mom you know that I saw Vanessa in heaven don't you and I said no I had no idea um, so it was just it was just amazing and he said that she she put her arms out and, you know, just said Christian and embraced him and wow. how awesome that was, you know, yeah, and he got to was. meet three grandparents that he had yeah. never met before. They left me in the ditch for three hours before they called the police. They very wrongly, they, they, she or they poured alcohol on me, said I was drinking. I. I told her to let me drive the, ve the vehicle, which was another lie, mm -hmm. and which is very not true. So they poured alcohol all over you to make all it seem me. like you were mm -hmm. intoxicated at the time. Exactly. Which, of course, when they got him to the hospital, they tested him. They did him. DUI you know, or nothing. whatever. The test. They found, excuse me, not a drop of alcohol in me. You know, for me, I knew that. I mean, it was going to take a miracle to even for him to survive. Sure. So I mm -hmm. knew I had to, I could not be begging God for a miracle and to give me my son back on one hand, but on the other hand, hating her, not forgiving her. No. Yeah. I knew that I had to forgive her. Sure. I mean, I had so many parents say to me, I don't know how you did that. You know, if it were me, she would already be six foot under herself. Mm -hmm. You know, all of that, but mm -hmm. I had to focus on him and the miracle that we needed. And I knew if I was bitter and not 
you know, forgiving her. I mean, I know that God forgave me and I just had to forgive her and, and let that go. And of course yeah. he did too. And, you know, I'm not saying it was easy. Sure. Not saying it of was easy it for easy. any of us, mm -mm. you know, and just a few months into all of this, my husband, his dad started having heart attacks and strokes and mm. within, um, about two years he was in a nursing home, you know, so wow. everything just kind of went, you know, very quickly. Sure. But, you know, yeah. God got us through that. So tell us a little bit about the experience you had when you were in heaven. Like, what was that like and what did you see? Perfect everything. What, what was the first thing you saw? Did you see the the gates of heaven or? I really can't tell you if I did or, or not, but I, I definitely saw a perfect, everything perfect, everything beautiful, everything. Everyone was so happy, nice, kind, mm -hmm. welcoming. There's no, there's no negativity. There's no, no anger. No, it was just perfect. Everything perfect. Is I, I we all know Jesus. He is perfect. He, he said my name. He's a Christian, and he, his arms out. And he came to me and he gave me a, a, a huge hug. Mm -hmm. I said, huge, he's like, he's God, okay? He must be pretty huge. He's like, he's huge, I trust the worlds. <laughs> <laughs> and he gave me a hug and he told me he, he loved me. He told me I'm going to have, one day I'm going to have a platform. I'm going to bring thousands to Christ and be very well known. And, you know, so whenever I came back to earth and I changed my senses and was able to do things on my own again or whatever, I started thinking and I started praying to God. I started saying, Lord, I know that we can do all things through you, through Christ who strengthens us. So, you know, thousands of people, Lord, why don't we make it millions? One thing I want to say about heaven is, you know, he always talks about, and he tells everyone about the hug, mm -hmm. about Jesus giving him a hug, and since he has been back, I mean, he always was very loving and would hug people, but I mean, yeah. everybody gets a hug. It's just yeah. kind of like the Lord gave him that love, and mm -hmm. he wants to share that. So you mentioned that you were out of town, uh, so when you got the call, what were your first thoughts uh, that were running through your mind? Not Christian, not Christian, mm -hmm. not Christian. I just yeah. kept saying not Christian. You know, it, I, I didn't realize, I heard my daughter talking to her husband on the phone. We were in Cancun and um, we'd never been even out of town before, my daughter and I. But it was my 50th birthday and so special occasion, she took me. So um, she's, got the phone call and I could tell something was wrong and I'm just like listening and then then I could tell she said Christian and my heart just sank but I'm like no no it's it's gonna be nothing you know that's what I'm telling myself sure. and then I hear yeah. that they life flighted him we're down in Muldrow so you know the hospital there couldn't do anything for him and that's a pretty good distance away from Tulsa too yeah right? it's um, yeah. You know, well, yeah, from or... Fort Smith, it's about two hours. Mm -hmm. And he was at a major hospital, a big hospital, but, uh, and they weren't even willing to life flight him because they didn't think it would do any good. Wow. And my husband and the youth pastor that was there and his cousin, they were just praying, praying, praying. And then the uh, doctor said, because my husband was like, you have to do something, you have to do something. So I think probably just to hush my husband up, he said, okay, you know, life flight him to Tulsa. But when I heard the words life flighted, I just remember just kind of like sliding down onto the floor, you know, out of the bed and just crying and saying, not Christian, not Christian. And then when I was able to get myself up, just started throwing stuff in the suitcase, you know, and thinking we were going to be out of there immediately. But it took, um, couldn't get a flight out to the following day. Oh, wow. So... So that was quite a day. Mm -hmm. So what were you doing during this time of just waiting to leave? Well, 
for hours we were trying to get a flight out, but you know, and, then, and back and forth on the phone with my husband and stuff. But um, two things that the Lord did that day that I will always know was the Lord. Um, after we finally got a flight scheduled, my daughter, um, we went back up to the room because we'd been down in the offices at the time and the hotel was trying to help us. But we sat down on the bed and we were just like, we were just like wiped out. And she said, okay, mom, we've got the rest of the day. We can't just sit here in the hotel room. And I said, well, what do you want to do? You know, I mean, we're not going to do anything, you know. She said, well, let's just take a walk on the beach. I said, okay, let's do that. So we walked down to the water. And as we're walking to the water, there is his beach as far as you can see to the right and to the left, miles of beach. But right in my path, right there, was this little blue cross uh, mm. that I almost stepped on. And I saw it and I said to my daughter, I said, Mia, what is this? But I knew what it was. I didn't know what it was. It wasn't a piece of jewelry. Sure. But I knew what it was that yeah. God had said, I am here. Because, I mean, you know, when you think about it, a beach as far as you can see either direction and it's going to be right in my path. What are the odds? What are the odds? Yeah. And it's a little powder blue cross. It's not off of a necklace or anything. And um, it's just a piece of plastic, but it's a cross. Mm -hmm. And so it's at home in my jewelry box. And then um, uh, as we're walking, she took a few photographs, photographs of the ocean, not of me or anything like that. Because, I mean, you know, we weren't doing that. But um, later, my mom was looking at the photos and and it was the most beautiful picture of the ocean with storm out in the ocean. It was storms were rolling in. Of course, our storm had just hit. Mm -hmm. And um, there was just one set of footprints, you know, in the sand. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, it's a very famous picture mm -hmm. of one set of footprints means that's when the Lord, you know, you're saying, where are you, Lord? this is my worst storm ever well he was carrying me mm -hmm. there was only one set of footprints that was his footprints because wow. he had me on his back and you you guys had just come from that direction yeah we had we had just got the phone call we had spent hours that morning trying to get out and so then when we finally got the flight arranged then we took the walk on the beach and that's when I found the cross and that's when I um my daughter took the picture and didn't even realize it was one set of footprints. Mm -hmm. And you know, it's Cancun. There's a lot of people down there. There shouldn't have been just one set of footprints. But I will show you um, those photos. They're on my living room wall frame. Oh wow! Yeah, so, I'd love to see those. Yeah, that's so awesome. That was that. That was just God saying, "I'm mm -hmm. here." Yep. So tell me a little bit about the people that visited Christian while he he was in the hospital. So yeah. Um, we just started noticing um, fairly quickly in this whole thing, we would have nurses that would say things like, I drove quickly to get to work tonight because I wanted to be the one that got to take care of Christian. And we'd have the cleaning people that would come in and they'd say, there's just something about being in this room. I want to, I want to be in this room. And they'd come in and they'd just visit with us and visit. And, you know, he wasn't charming and making them laugh. He was in a coma and mm. he was a hard patient. I mean, he was paralyzed on one side of his body. So it's not like he was an easy patient. Sure. They're not even communicating with Christian mm, at this point, right? Not okay. at all. So we just, we just knew it was the Holy Spirit, you yeah. know, wow. that's all it could be, you sure. know, the Holy Spirit, yeah. just like with the Facebook page, how it just started growing so rapidly. And so we just knew that God was bringing in all these people to watch this miracle because mm. we were claiming and believing mm. and not going to accept anything but a miracle yeah. when he was first in the hospital they said be prepared he may not pull through this you know and then when he did pull through they said well be prepared what you have now is is very very possible what you're going to have forever mm. which was nothing again still not talking not doing anything okay <laughs> <laughs> so not so, talking, not walking, nothing. Yeah, nothing, nothing wow. at all. Yeah. But I would tell them and point to him and say, 
you remember the name Christian Mayberry because we're going to get him back. Mm -hmm. And um, several years later, we got to do kind of like we called it a victory tour through mm -hmm. um, Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. And we got to go to facilities and places where we were told that. And um, like one in Oklahoma City, the Children's Center uh, in Bethany. And, you know, that doctor told me with literally tears coming down her cheeks, she said, it will take a miracle to get your son back. And so we got to walk through those doors just like this. When he left that facility, he was on a stretcher. Mm. He wasn't saying a word, nothing. And so we've got pictures of her hugging him. And, mm. you know, they were all like in shock how tall he was. They were like, we knew we had to put bed extenders on the bed, but wow, look how tall he is. And it was, it was really cool. But, you know, a lot of doctors said, you know, I'm sorry, but this is it. But, wow. but God. But, but, but Dr. Woosley. Yeah, Dr. Woosley said, it would take a miracle, but I believe in miracles. I love that. Too. That's so cool.